Hi, I'm Susan Medeiros. I'm the managing editor of the One Network, and I'm here today with Dr. Fernando Arevalo from King Khalid Hospital in Saudi Arabia, who just gave an excellent talk about some of the maculopathies that he's seen with high-powered blue light lasers. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, thank you, Susan, for the opportunity to be here. Tell us a little about your study and what you found. Well, it was a very interesting study. Um, we uh, started to see patients with uh, um, laser maculopathies in our ER in the hospital uh, about two years ago, uh, come in every week uh, at the ER, at least one patient a week or maybe one patient every two weeks uh, with these laser maculopathies. It's a relatively new thing. And uh, we started collecting the cases. Uh, we have uh, founded a group, uh, the King Collette uh, Eye Specialist uh, Collaborative Retina Study Group. And, uh, and we put together whenever we have interesting series like this one. And uh, all our faculty and uh, fellows have collaborated uh, with this study. And uh, we're happy to say that after um, a lot of work uh, and, and closing the study on 14 patients, 14 eyes, uh, we have it accepted for uh, the Journal of Ophthalmology, the Journal of the American Academy, Academy of Ophthalmology. So we're very proud. So uh, this is a very interesting pathology. Uh, patients come with uh, uh, different type of uh, a variety of uh, maculopathies, including macular holes, full thickness macular holes, uh, and hemorrhage in the retina, subhyloidal hemorrhage, and uh, subinternal limiting membrane hemorrhage. Some other patients develop epiretinal membranes, and, and, and they can also develop a schisis in the retina, separation of the different layers of the retina uh, with decrease of visual acuity, all of them. The mean visual acuity of these patients decreases to the level of 2,400. And uh, after observation on therapy or therapy, uh, surgical intervention, um, the patients improved to the level of uh, 2,040. 71% um, of our patients needed surgical intervention, though, so it's not a benign condition. Uh, but fortunately, all the patients improved in terms of uh, visual acuity. Um, we have uh, treated our, our patients with uh, full thickness macular hole uh, with uh, um, the um, technique of vitrectomy and uh, um, peeling of the internal limited membrane and gas with success, uh, closing the macular hole in all cases, but at the beginning we observe our cases uh, to see if the, there is a, a spontaneous closure of the macular hole. But apparently in these uh, um, cases with laser uh, uh, associated macular holes, the, the, uh, at least in our series, uh, there were no spontaneous closure of the macular hole, which we can see in some trauma cases, in some trauma, traumatic macular holes. So we just observe them for at least uh, uh, three months and then if there is no uh, closure, uh, then we do the surgical procedure. The uh, patients with uh, uh, hemorrhage, uh, they are treated with uh, jack laser hyalidotomy, and, and um, we have been successful in most of them, but a couple of patients needed vitrectomy uh, uh, to clear the, the hemorrhage uh, because of the uh, uh, failure of the uh, jack laser to clear the hemorrhage. Um, the other patients uh, improve spontaneously. Uh, patients with uh, increasing uh, retinal thickness and epiretinal membranes, we needed to do a vitrectomy for those to peel the uh, epiretinal membrane. But patients that had disruption of the ellipsoid zone on OCT and showed those uh, lucencies in, in that area of the photoreceptors improved in a couple of months to visual acuity of 2020. So some of the complications are not so, so bad. Um, I think that the problem of the, uh, that is occurring, and we have seen uh, probably another 14 to maybe a 16 to a total of 30 cases now in Saudi Arabia in the last couple of years, is that um, uh, teens uh, tend to buy these lasers in the internet and, and they uh, play with it. And, and they are not aware of the hazard of this type of laser and the power of the laser is very high, up to 1,200 milliwatts. Mm -hmm. And this is a class four laser, according to the ANSI classification. And those lasers are cap capable of causing damage to the eye. Mm -hmm. So these patients are playing with these lasers that are very dangerous, and they damage the eye just with a very brief exposure. All the cases are unilateral, and, uh, and the damage, as I mentioned, is uh, to the level of 2,400. 
uh, fortunately with therapy we're able, we're able to, uh, to help them. Help them. Um, these uh, lasers are blue lasers. Um, the uh, lasers, uh, the wavelength is important because the, the shorter wavelength uh, blue, uh, in this case, uh, um, it's more prone to damage the, the retinal structures because of the absorption of the xanthophyll pigment and also the melanin in the uh, RPE. And, and this is what accounts for um, the damage in the retina in addition to uh, the uh, high power of the laser. Even though the exposure is short, the damage is tremendous. Hmm. How short of an exposure time? Are you the exposure about? is uh, fractions of a second. Really? Um, even the, um, the, the eye has um, an, the blink mm -hmm. and the uh, aversion uh, response uh, to, um, that uh, limits the exposure to laser to 0 0.2 seconds or less. And even with that uh, um, aversion and, and blink response, um, the um, handheld lasers are so powerful that they cause a lot of damage. That averse response and blink response help for the laser pointers, for example, that um, will cause no damage uh, unless they, are, they have a longer duration of exposure to the retina. And uh, uh, so there has to be it's important because the power of these uh, laser pointers that we use on our lectures every day mm -hmm. is, uh, is very low. And uh, so these are very different from, from the handheld lasers that we're talking about here, which are again, class four lasers according to the ANSI classification. So uh, it's important to emphasize the difference between these two types of lasers. Well, very interesting. Thank you so much for coming by and sharing that. Well, thank you very much for the invitation.